Sebastian, thanks for the loan of the CH-750 Cruiser. It's an airplane that we've had a number of requests on. Uh, everybody loves a Stolbird, but the problem is they don't want the penalty that goes with many Stolbirds of no cruise to speak of. You sure fix that. We're off on about a 65 degree day. There's two adults on board, Roger, myself, and uh, 12 to 15 gallons of fuel. Had a bit of a bird incident on takeoff, which required a fair amount of serious maneuvering, but the nice thing is, as you pitch up through it, you've still got good visibility over the nose. 110, 115, 120 crews, not bad at all. What was the mindset behind the development of the cruiser? Well, like you just mentioned, we have a lot of customers that love our Stoll airplanes, but uh, one of the reasons they love these airplanes is the, the cabin, the, the visibility, the ability to get in and out that inherent to a high wing airplane and the tricycle gear configuration. Talking to our customers, a lot of these guys weren't using the stole capability of the airplane. And because they weren't using it, then they were also complaining that's a bit of a slow airplane. Which, of course, if you're using the stole capability, you expect to have a relatively slow airplane. With the cruiser, we went after the cruise configuration rather than being a stole airplane. Now, to do that, there are quite a number of different things to do. It's not just the airfoil. You know, a stole airplane, we have a fixed leading edge slat, which is a very effective high lift device. But then we also have a tail in line with that pushing more down. We have that inverted horizontal tail, full flying rudder, and then we have the big tires, which are purpose for off airport operations. So with this airplane, you get new airfoil in line for the 120 mile an hour cruise speed, smaller tail, because again, we've got more airflow going over the airplane at, at those speeds, and then fared wheels for more airport operation. Well, the one thing that was interesting, having flown many of the Zodiacs throughout the years, it's been fun to watch the development of the aircraft. Obviously, one thing that took some particular attention on your part was handling qualities. You did a marvelous job on pitch and roll in particular. It's an airplane that requires rudder domination right from the get-go. You stop the rudder as you come in with the roll. Otherwise, the roll is minimized significantly. But right. with a proper coordination, it turns smartly. There's a good force gradient in roll. It's not too light. Pitch has a very good force gradient, more linear than is roll trims very well, very obediently. There's a reasonable amount of pitch trim excursion with flap actuation, but at the same time, it's not one of those things where if you don't trim it up right away, you get an aching right arm. It was a just very pleasant airplane from all standard issues. The one thing that particularly stood out was visibility. You've got a fairly thin nose and a tremendous amount of visibility, especially laterally. Just a really nice view and a great airplane to just go touring. Absolutely, and, and visibility, you know, for us, it's the quality of the flight is, is an important thing because these are recreational airplanes, sport flying. We want to be able to enjoy ourselves, and for us, and for my dad as a designer, it was always a quality of flight experience so that it really is a good experience. Speed was really secondary oftentimes uh, because, again, if you're having fun and really enjoying yourself, you're already where you want to be. It's not getting to your destination as much. Now, of course, in the low-speed regime, the airplane is just very, very babyish. With flap extension, there's a very high frequency, very low amplitude buffet and everything that you do, the minute you get anywhere near a stall, there's no question what's going on, but you're holding a significant 12 to 15 pounds of aft stick with full extension and any power at all, and it just doesn't want to break, it'll mush through. Power off, there's a bit of a pitch buck, but at no point is there a real break to say, and I mean, I'm, having, I'm pulling this thing back to 20, 25 degrees alpha, but it doesn't want to break. Play a little bit with rudder and roll, both simultaneously, and I get the slide off, but I get no break and no dissymmetry yeah. overall. And surprisingly, just a very nice overall coordination, even through the buffeted brake. Yeah, we're really pleased with the slow flight characteristics on it. Obviously, the focus with this airplane was more the higher end, so we were a little bit concerned initially about what are we going to give up on the low end, but we're really pleased with that. And a very easy airplane to land, especially for the low time guys, and very, very predictable and, and, and very good handling characteristics. The aviation industry is far too automated and impersonal. Levels of care, service, and focus on customers have faded. Concierge provides premier customer care, leading our industry on a return to service. Find us at www.concierge.aero. Since 2001, MGL Avionics has produced avionics for experimental and light sport aircraft. The flagship product is the IEFIS, a comprehensive next generation flight, engine, and navigation instrument designed to meet the demands of the modern pilot. See more at www.mglavionics.com. Get there faster and in true Italian style. The P2008 Turbo by Technam, the ultimate high wing LSA, now available with the silky smooth Rotax 914 Turbo. www.technam.net. 
Okay, for somebody who's interested in the airplane, what's the process, what's it cost, what kind of kit offerings are out there, and oh, by the way, SLSA maybe? Maybe, maybe, I, I never say never, so. <laughs> you know, as Zenith Aircraft Company, we're a kit aircraft manufacturer, so we focus on the kit side of it. So that's what we've been working on this past year with this airplane, is really developing the kit. We use CNC manufacturing extensively throughout. With the 750 Cruiser, we're going to final whole size match drill kits, meaning that there's Clequo parts together and pretty much rivet right away. So really simplifying the process. We've been really pleased with how that's been coming along. Kit price, about 21000 for the airframe kit that's everything firewall back mm -hmm. no engine no instruments no paint no upholstery but pretty much everything it takes to put together I think we'll be able to see record in assembly times with this probably south of 400 hours in terms of building times so you know we're really pleased about that as in our other designs we also offer plans only as an option for the guys that like to bend sheet metal and cut parts we continue to do that as well as quick build kits builder assist centers for those that don't want to spend as much time what can somebody expect for a modest completion? What kind of price range are we looking at? Everything new, brand new engine, state-of-the-art glass panel display, and a modern kit, you're about $65,000. A little bit less with the used engine, a little bit more if you start putting more sophisticated avionics. What kind of fuel flows are you looking at in those cruise ranges? Coming down here, I was averaging about 2,600 RPM, which is about 65% power, and I was burning just under six gallons per hour. Pretty economical. You know, with the 650 we were flying with, had the same engine. Of course, the 650 is a little bit faster airplane. He was down to about under five gallons an hour. So and the whole trip we calculated with the two airplanes flying here uh, over a thousand miles, I think it was about $400 worth of gas. For two airplanes, two people, that's pretty good. What can we expect to see in the future from Zenith Aircraft and more important from this design platform? Because one of my favorite things you guys ever did was the 801. Yeah. yeah. Can we expect an 850? Maybe. With new product development, a lot of it's going to come from our customers. What do our customers want us to do? Right now with the talk of maybe doing away with the third class medical for private pilots, I think that would maybe open it up for larger airplanes like the 801 or our 640. Absolutely, that's a possibility. Uh, one thing we are going to be doing this summer at uh, Air Venture is we're going to be building one of these during the show at our venture together with uh, EAA and, and I think that'll be you know a, a good demonstration of the quality of the kit and, and how quickly and how easily it comes together and really showing the rest of the aviation community that there still is a lot of interest in building one's own airplane. Outstanding. Well we appreciate your time we sure had fun with your airplane and uh, if all of a sudden you can't quite make the trip back you call me I'll fly. <laughs> we'll do that thanks Jim. Thank you very much.